copyrighted program created by Rio Grande. Los Angeles Police calling all cars. Attention all cars. Broadcast 186 regarding a narcotic smuggler. Suspect described as a girl, Oriental, 5 feet, 100 pounds. Black hair and eyes, fair complexion. She may have one or more accomplices. That's all. Girls in question. Telling you the story of Rio Grande cracked gasoline. A story which has always been written by someone else. Tonight it's my personal privilege to tell you how I feel about gasoline. Now I'm not an engineer or a chemist, so I know nothing about the contents of various gasolines or just what they should contain, but I do know that tests for gasoline quality are made and are the basis of selection for practically every large city. Oakland and Los Angeles, for example. The two largest users of gasoline in California have specified Rio Grande cracked gasoline for years to power their police cars, ambulances, and other emergency equipment and have just renewed these contracts. Some 30 other cities and counties have selected Rio Grande cracked as the finest gasoline obtainable to power their motor equipment. This in itself is enough for me, for I believe that Rio Grande's presentation of the fact that more police cars, fire engines, ambulances, and other emergency equipment is powered with Rio Grande cracked gasoline wherever it is sold than any other brand, that fact, I say, is the most honest and convincing reason to buy that has been offered to us as motorists. Furthermore, I know that Rio Grande, in large measure, has been responsible for the preservation of the independent gasoline dealer, a most important and commendable policy. So tomorrow and every tomorrow, use Rio Grande Crack as the finest gasoline you can buy for your car. It is our pleasure to present Pearson M. Hall, United States Attorney for the Southern District of California. Mr. Hall. For many years, the leading nations of the world have maintained an international compact and have met annually in an effort to suppress the manufacture, traffic, and use of narcotics. Recently, this long effort has been given great impetus by the action of China, which, under a program initiated a year or so ago, has been particularly vigorous in its determination to rid herself of the stigma of centuries. The United States Customs Service is one of many investigating agencies of the Treasury Department. It always has been, and still is, our first line of defense against contraband narcotics. It operates quietly, without fanfare or publicity, but it operates nevertheless with dogged sureness. By the coordinated efforts of its own far-flung agents and operatives of other nations, it functions in practically all the countries throughout the world. The collector of customs in this district is Alfred A. Cohn. It was through him that the facts of the case you are about to hear were presented to me for prosecution. The episode with certain dramatic license was taken from the transcript of the trial of Maria Wendt. It illustrates that there truly is the long arm of the law. Aboard a yacht, lying quietly in the bay of Naples, a man and a woman sit watching the dancing lights of other ships at anchor. Across the still water comes the strains of music, a love song played softly in the casino. A soft Italian moon carves its way up the crest of the surrounding hills as the man and woman watch the lights moving slowly to and fro across the harbor. The bay's lovely tonight, isn't it, dear? Nothing's as lovely as you, Nina. You do love me, don't you? More than anything in the world. Must you go away tomorrow? Yes. Why? Well, I've told you, dear. I have to get back to the factory. We're sending out another shipment this week, and I've got to be on hand. Can't somebody else turn to that part of the work? You promised you wouldn't bring business into our trip. I know. And after all, a honeymoon is a sort of one-time affair, isn't it? But things haven't worked out as I'd planned. Is anything wrong? No. Oh, now stop worrying your pretty head about me. But I am worried about you, darling. You've been so quiet all day. Ever since that cablegram came this morning. Tell me, what's wrong? Oh, it's nothing. It'll work out all right. You must tell me what's worrying you. Well, Spay is demanding more men to run his office. He claims he lost a boatload of guns last month because he didn't have enough men to protect them. Darling, I wish you weren't mixed up with men like Spay. I don't trust him. 
But Nina, we've got to get these guns into China. And Spay is the only man we can use in Shanghai. He's the only man with enough connections to make it safe. But what are his connections that they're so valuable? He's engaged to marry the daughter of one of China's most influential officials. Then why don't you send him the men he wants? Darling, I have a confession to make. What is it, dear? I'm not the rich importer I told you I was when we were married. You're not? No. I'm just an ordinary cheap gun runner, trying to make whatever I can out of smuggling guns into China so that one set of Chinese can blow out the brains of another set. Oh, darling. Do you really think that makes any difference to me? You may be a gun runner or even a smuggler, but you're not cheap or ordinary. I love you, darling. Don't you realize that? No matter what you are, or what you do, nothing can ever change that. You don't have to worry about money now or ever. Why, well, more than either of us could ever use. It's yours, darling. All of it. But, Nina, I couldn't use your money for this. Why not? It's yours, too. Then pay all the men he needs. Send him a regiment. But for tonight, let's forget this. Let's forget China. Let's forget everything but us. And I love you. Through the still whiteness of a hospital in Shanghai walked Dr. Albert Spey and a dark, thin man whose furtive glances cast an air of mystery about him. Up the winding stairs of the hospital, past sleeping wards where death hovered in noiseless flight, through dimly lit corridors, to pause at last before a door on the topmost floor. There are no patients here. We shall be alone. You are the soul of caution, Dr. Spey. I am already under suspicion in Shanghai. Ours is not a safe profession. Smuggling never has been. You have the key? I must remember to oil that hinge. Go in, Romano. Our journey is not yet done. You're uh, sure we have not been followed? I am sure. No one except myself is allowed on this floor. Uh, where is this other room of which you spoke? I see no door. Watch. Marvelous. I would never have found it. No one else ever has. Mm, I see you have a complete supply. I just received a new shipment from Brandstetter. Yeah. He is in Naples, you know. No, I did not know. What is he doing there? Honeymoon? No. That is not possible. It is too good a joke. Who is she? An Italian countess. Mm. Lots of money. Leave it to Leffelholz to marry the rich heiress. But uh, how about the American girl? Trust Brand to forget about any woman as soon as her money is gone. Well, you, my friend, are next then. Not me. Next or ever. But uh, Maria, what about her? Maria. And she leaves the convent. Maria will be a very capable nurse. I shall send her to Germany for six months to learn uh, laboratory technique. She will be valuable to us. But as for a man, it is not for men like us. Mm, Bramstetter seems to fancy it. With him as with us, it is a business. Romance is his chief source of capital. We have made our fortunes. Then we shall consider romance. Eh? Meantime, we go to work and pack our ammunition. Yes. <laughs> our ammunition. In a religious school just outside the city of Shanghai, a young girl stands before the dean of students. Maria, the day you leave us, we are sorry to see you go, child. You have been a faithful student. You will make an excellent nurse. We are glad that you have decided to devote your life to relieving the suffering of your people. Thank you, Sister Beatrice. You have led a sheltered life here, my dear. When you go out into the world, you must be careful of the pitfalls that beset the path of the very young. I am young in years only, sister. I've seen so much here in the school hospital. I, I feel I know what to expect. It is fortunate that your family has lived so near. But still, you need more practical experience. Has your father arranged your place in a hospital in the city? Yes. I begin there tomorrow. I understand that Dr. Spey is sending you to Germany to complete your technical training. Oh, yes. He's been so very kind to me. Yes. 
It is not my way to be uncharitable, my dear, but, but I do not trust Dr. Spade. Oh, I'm sure that if you knew him as I do, you'd like him and trust him. I'm not so sure. Dr. Spade has been a friend of my father for years. It is arranged that I shall marry Dr. Spade. I'm not so sure I approve of that either. But at least... When I finish my training in Germany, I shall return to China. Then we shall be married. Do you love this man, my child? Oh, I love him. I love him so much that sometimes I think I'll die before I see him. My throat aches to sing, call his name. Oh, Sister Beatrice, I... I do love him so. Oh, such love is dangerous. It destroys. It kills. My love cannot destroy. It cannot kill. It can only bring life. New life. To both of us. Let us stop the flight of time. Let us turn back the clock to a time just a few weeks before our story began. The scene is the League of Nations Assembly of Geneva. The speaker, the American representative to the convention for the suppression of the narcotic traffic. Our problem is to face squarely where it belongs... The responsibility for the sudden and widespread increase in the narcotic drug traffic. China is conducting a vigorous and unrelenting campaign to suppress this traffic. Drastic means are being used to curb not only the use, but the sale of drugs. However, the situation in the Far East is by no means all of this color. I demand that the speaker either make his charges specific or withdraw his remarks. I do not believe that there is any doubt as to my meaning. I decry the bad faith. I demand good faith from all the members of this assembly here for treaties and agreements for the suppression of this illegal drug traffic. I demand specific names of persons known to be violating these agreements. Gentlemen, such demands can achieve nothing. No punishment can be meted to individuals that will excuse governmental laxity in enforcing its agreement. Again, I demand that the speaker be specific. Very well. Gentlemen, I name letter host Branstetter, now in Naples. I name Dr. Albert Spey, now the head of a hospital in Shanghai. I name Alfredo Garcia Romano, associate of Spey and head of the ring in Mexico City. And gentlemen, shall I continue? I promise the cooperation of my government in the apprehension of letter host Branstetter. That's the facilities of my government for the capture and punishment of Albert Spade. The Mexican government will spare no expense and effort to apprehend and punish Alfredo Garcia Romano. Back in Shanghai, in the little room on the top floor of Dr. Spade's hospital, the doctor and the girl are talking. Yeah, these are the trunks, Maria. I want you to take them with you when you sail tomorrow. But why so many of them? These are more than I needed for the trip to Germany. They will contain some of the property of Herr Brandt, whom you will meet in Yokohama. Can I go by way of Yokohama? That is best. You will then take a steamer to Los Angeles. There you will again meet Herr Brandt at the hotel. You will find the name of the hotel in this letter. You are to deliver the trunks to him then. He will send you on to Mexico City. Senor Romano will reach you there. And and when do I come back to you, Albert? And our work is done. But should anything happen, should anything go wrong with our plans, you are to fly to New York, book passage on the Deutschland, and meet me in Berlin. We will go to Poland together. But, but Albert... You speak of plans. What can happen? In the business we are in, anything can happen. You must not talk to anyone you do not know while you are on the boat. Albert, what are you keeping from me? Mm -hmm. You're not telling me all that I should know. What is in his trunk? Answer me, Albert. Going on a mission for us, are you not? What can I do to show my trust of you? You can tell me what is in these trunks. I cannot, Maria. 
But, Alfred, you must love me. I love you. You know what that means. I, I suppose so. You suppose so. Oh, Albert, don't you know that there are no seas too wide, no mountains too high, no torture made too great, no suffering that I would not stand. You are. Maria, come here. Lady, 
There's enough heroin in these little silk bags to send you to jail for a million years. No. 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 In the trunks of Maria Wen, customs officers found 54 pounds of heroin, the most powerful drug known to the narcotic trade. But Maria Wendt is not placed in jail. Guarded by an officer and a stenographer, she is taken to a room in a downtown hotel, the hotel at which she is to meet Herr Brandt. Officers hope the leader of the gang will keep the rendezvous. But hours pass, and no attempt is made to contact the girl. Miss Clark? Yes? Your brother's in the lobby. He says he must see you at once. Well, can't he come up here? He asked me to tell you that he's got to see you. All right, wait a minute. Say, Bill, I've got to go downstairs a few minutes, okay? Well, you know, we're supposed to stay here and question this girl. I might need you if she decided to talk. I'll only be gone five minutes. Eddie's downstairs. I've got to go down and see if he needs anything. I'll be right back. Uh, we shouldn't risk this. If anything happens and one of us is out of the room, why no telling who'll get the axe. Nothing will happen. I'll be back in a few minutes. Make it snappy, then. Now, Miss Wendt, how about this trunk? Where'd you get it? I have told you so many times that the trunk is not mine. It is that of Herr Brown. And so far, you failed to convince us that there is any Herr Brown. I cannot help that. The trust belongs to him. If it contains narcotics, I do not know. You mean to say that you brought that trunk all the way here from Shanghai and didn't know what was in it? I do. Well, if you think we're going to believe that story, you're crazy. Crazy or not, as you say, it's true. Now, once more, may I take a bath? Oh, yes, go on. Don't worry, the fire escapes at the other end of the hall. Hey, wait a minute. I can't hear with the water running. Wait till I close this door. Okay, go ahead. Now, she hasn't talked. Still claims they're not her trunks. Says she didn't know the junk was in them. Okay, I'll call you. Miss Wentz. That's it. Miss Wentz. Miss Wentz! What line do you... She's gone! In the few brief seconds that the officer was talking, Maria Wentz walked out of the room and escaped. Sometime in the evening of that day, she alighted from a taxi cab at the United Air Force, boarded a plane, and flew eastward. In New York, mysteriously aided by Confederates still undisclosed, Maria Wentz became the wife of an American-born Chinese. Thus, she was able to obtain a new passport. Through the streets of New York, raced the swift of a girl heading for the waterfront in the birth of the Deutschland. Past warehouse, through traffic, Charles to come to a screeching halt just as the gang plane was beginning to be pulled away. Across the pier, breathless and flushed, raced the girl. Just a minute, sister. What's your hurry? Who are you? Federal officers, miss. What are you going to do? We're flying back to Los Angeles. Now. No. 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 Maria Wendt was returned to Los Angeles, and within ten days was indicted for the smuggling and possession of narcotic drugs. Our scene shifts to the court of Judge Alfred B. Stevens, brilliant young assistant United States Attorney Jack Irwin, is questioning Maria Wendt. You saw those trunks are not yours? No, they are not mine. Well, why were they in your possession? I was to deliver them to Herr Brandt to make the city. Do you know this Herr Brandt? His real name is Brandstetter, isn't it? Yes. Do you know where he is now? No. Do you know that on board a ship bound to New York, he hanged himself? No. No, no, he didn't. He didn't. Brandstetter, you didn't really think you'd get into Mexico, did you? Why not? I'm innocent. I don't know this Maria Wendt or whatever her name is that you say implicates me in a smuggling plot. Well, Wendt's the name, all right, and you know it. Her arrest in Los Angeles was the reason we picked you up in Havana. Well, this is all a lot of nonsense. Do you mind if I go now to my cabin? No, you're safe. You won't get away from us. Perhaps not, my friend. But then, who knows? Hey, Branstetter. Time for dinner. Branstetter. Well, I'll be... Hey, Parker, Parker! Yes, sir? Get the ship's doctor. A man hanged himself. No, 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 he didn't. He didn't. He, he was only one of the gang you were working for, was he not? Yes. Who were the others? I don't know. Did you ever hear of Alfredo Romano? No. You never saw Romano? No. You didn't arrange to meet him in Mexico City, too? No. You didn't know that yesterday in Mexico City he shot himself? No, 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 he didn't, he didn't, he didn't. Say, Romano, the police are here. Police? What do they want? They say you're a narcotic smuggler. They have come to take you to prison. No. I can't go to prison. I can't. It's that went woman. 
I knew we should not trust her. The police are insisting now. Tell them I'm not here. Tell them anything. Doctor, doctor, they're breaking down the door. Keep them here. I'll go into the bedroom. Keep them for only a moment. Where is the Romano? Eh? I am here. Capitan, you did not think to cut Alfredo Garcia Romano so easily, did you? My compliments, senor Capitan. No, 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 Richard, Richard. Here's a photograph. Do you recognize this man? No. That is a photograph of Dr. Albert Spay. Did you ever hear of him? Yes. Then you do know Dr. Spay. Yes. Is he the man who gave you those trunks? No. Is he a member of this smuggling ring? No. Do you know that yesterday the body of Albert Spay was found in a Shanghai cemetery? No, 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 no. it is not true. It is not true. Have you completed the autopsy on the body of Dr. Spay? Yes, we just finished. And you found? Dr. Spay committed suicide by swallowing these. Hmm. Slivers are bamboo. Yes, we call these bamboo snakes. Roll them up, tie them with tender strips of green bamboo, and swallow them. Mm-hmm. Effective, but painful. Well, not in this case. Dr. Spay had taken the precaution of deadening the pain with narcotics. Then we are treated at home. Well, the result is the same. Another narcotic smuggler out of the way. It is written, he dies like a beast who has done no good while he lives. No, it is not true. It is not true. Your Honor, the prosecution rests. Fifteen minutes later, the jury verdict was read. Guilty is charged. No, 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 no. Maria Wendt was doomed to prison. Remember this. Hot summer days, long vacation drives over roads of every conceivable type. This means a terrific strain upon your motor. Protect it. Use an oil that can take punishment that will not break down in spite of long hours of driving at high speeds in hot weather. Be sure of getting this protection and use only Sinclair motor oils in your motor. Refined from the highest price, highest grade crude oils in America, Sinclair oils are all oil and cost no more than other quality oils that do not have Sinclair's exclusive advantages. The exclusive Sinclair refining process removes all harmful petroleum jellies and waxes which cause ordinary oils under heat to thin like water and do irreparable harm to your motor. When you stop at your neighborhood Rio Grande dealers tomorrow morning for a tank full of Rio Grande cracked gasoline, ask the attendant to specify the correct grade of Sinclair motor oil for your car. There is a specific grade for its age, make, and mileage. So remember, these things tomorrow morning. Rio Grande cracked gasoline for police car performance. Sinclair motor oil for perfect motor protection. And you're calling all cars news at your independent Rio Grande dealers. And now we again hear United States Attorney Pearson M. Hall. Mr. Hall. Maria Wendt was sentenced to 10 years imprisonment on a conviction of smuggling 54 pounds of heroin into this country. This frail Chinese girl, suffering from an incurable illness, was taken on May 27th to the woman's industrial prison at Alderson, West Virginia. It is doubtful that she will live to serve her sentence. <laughs> Calling all cars, attention all cars, the cancellation broadcast 186 regarding a narcotic smuggler. Suspect is now in custody. That's all. Go with it. This is your narrator, Frederick Lindsay, bidding you good night for Rio Grande.